Hey there you Daniacs, welcome back to Great Dane Care. Now if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you have some questions about whether or not you should be using an elevated feeder. Now for years, this was kind of a uh, assumed decision that, you, that most owners would be using a elevated feeder just to simply make it easier and more conducive for their Great Dane to reach their food and water bowls. However, this changed with a study that came out in 2004 called the Glickman study that was performed in Purdue. Uh, so in today's video, we'll be talking a little bit why the results of the study probably shouldn't be trusted and also kind of the benefits potentially of using elevated feeders for Great Dane. Now, if you're brand new to the channel, uh, my name is Zach and this is Gus. We're part of the team from GreatDaneCare.com and it's our kind of goal and mission to help Great Danes as well as their families everywhere by putting out content to you know, better ensure that we take care of our wonderful gentle giants. Uh, so if this is something that resonates with you, make sure that you go ahead and like this video and subscribe down below so that way you don't miss out on any future updates. Now, as I alluded to, uh, Great Dane families have been using elevated feeders for dozens, if not hundreds of years to make it a little bit easier for our, our dogs to kind of reach their food and water bowls. Now, this uh, study came out in 2004 from Purdue University called the Glickman Study that quite literally sent everybody into a frenzy. Now, the reason for this is that one of the conclusions from the study here found that the use of elevated feeders was a contributing factor for the life-threatening condition called GDB, um, sometimes also referred, referred to as torsion or bloat as well. Now, the issue with the study in this case, if we really are to kind of dig into this, is that it wasn't actually a study performed with dogs kind of testing one factor versus the other. There were no sets of control groups. It was simply an analysis of information provided over the years from hundreds of different types of dogs across many different breeds and some of their lifestyle conditions. Uh, so for this reason, because up until this point when they did this study, it was extremely common and frankly still is today to use elevated feeders, um, it was seen that because feeders were being used, that was attributed to a causative factor for the increased prevalence of GDB. Now, unfortunately, we already know that GDB is, a, is found at a higher occurrence rate in Great Danes, so it's more of a, in my opinion, a correlation factor to say that elevated feeders directly contributed, contributed to a higher occurrence rate for GDB. It's more likely the case that because that they are already in higher rates for Great Danes and Great Danes coincidentally also used elevated feeders, that that was the ultimate reasoning. Uh, so I think if you kind of ignore the results of this really analysis, it wasn't even truly a study, just think about it from a practical standpoint. Uh, elevated feeders have been, been used for dozens if not hundreds of, hundreds of years prior to the study, and they continue to be wide, uh, widely used today as well. And I think this is for a number of good reasons here. I mean, if you just think about it from an ergonomic standpoint, uh, Great Danes are extremely tall dogs, and while they certainly do have the ability to bend down to reach a ball on the floor, um, it's just a much more ergonomic position for them to not have to bend down quite as far. Now, when your dog is you know, younger and smaller, of course, the use of a feeder may only be raising it a couple of inches, and it doesn't make a huge difference, especially when you can consider how kind of nimble and flexible they are. But certainly as our Great Danes get older, uh, especially if they develop different orthopedic conditions or different pains and discomforts, having to reach all the way down to a floor to the floor for a full-grown Great Dane may actually cause them pain. Uh, so as certainly as your Great Dane ages, um, if and for only that reason, it may make a lot of good sense to use an elevated feeder just for uh, their own ergonomic benefits. Um, inside of our family, we use them because we just think it seems like a very practical approach to just raise the food well up a little bit to make it easier for them to reach. Now, some people on the other side of the spectrum will argue that, you know, in the wild, our dogs would have eaten their ground off the floor. And I don't disagree with that. That's certainly possible. But on the kind of other side of the token, it doesn't seem to say that we should just completely do away with these enhancements of the benefits just because that's how they develop from an ancestral standpoint. Uh, so assuming your dog is healthy, I don't think it makes a huge difference either way in terms of whether or not you use these. But I do think it makes their life a little bit more comfortable in terms of just the ease of reach to get to their food and water bowls here. Now, if you do choose to use an elevated bowl for your Great Dane, one thing you'll want to consider is the actual height placement of the bowl. Just a general kind of good recommendation is about six inches below the shoulder, just for like a general height here. Now, of course, if your Great Dane is still growing, this means that as they kind of grow, the kind of height of the bowls will also need to change with them. So it can make a lot of sense to not have to buy kind of feeder after feeder, but just simply get an adjustable height one. That's that way you're kind of off and running and set without having to kind of, you know, rebuild them or buy brand new ones. You can just simply slide the setting up and down to make it a little bit easier. Now, of course, once your Great Dane reaches their full size, you know, you can 
move to a nicer version or perhaps do, I've seen some really cool DIY, DIY versions on Pinterest for people who use different kind of metal pipe fittings, uh, different kind of wood variations to kind of build their own elevated feeders. Um, so there's some really cool things out there. I think people have gotten really creative and done a great job. Uh, but we'll also link below to one of our articles that kind of has some, if you just want to buy some off the shelf that are both adjustable, some have built-in food storage. Uh, so that way you've got a few options to pick from. The ultimate takeaway here is that if your Great Dane's healthy, do they need to use an elevated feeder? Probably not, but at the same time, they'll probably also get some ergonomic benefits from not having to bend quite as far up and down to reach their food and water. I don't think it's a deal breaker at the end of the day, but if you do have an older dog or one that's experiencing different orthopedic issues, in those cases, I certainly think it makes a ton of sense to simply get one just to make their life that much easier to reach their food and water. You know, if it, if it is a, uh, a pain issue that's preventing them from getting down, then of course they may end up getting dehydrated. They may not be getting enough nutrients and that could actually cause their conditions to deteriorate. Uh, so any obstacles or kind of, you know, pain barriers you can use to kind of raise the food, bowl, food bowls up to make it easier to reach certainly could help there. Uh, so that's just my quick tape on, you know, whether or not, you know, there is a controversy truly around the use of elevated feed bowls. We use them in our house and we plan to for, you know, the foreseeable future unless we find a, you know, a legitimate study that really proves that there are some serious downsides to using them. Uh, but in any event, we hope you found this video helpful. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel down below and give it a thumbs up. And until next time, stay gaming, my friends.